one, two, three, test. Biscuit is my nan. Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to the Liverpool career mode. And this is episode 33. This is uh, 33 with an Austrian accent. There you go. That is the one that I picked myself. You guys allowed me to pick the language this time. Some of you guys in the comments said that. In the comments down below though, go ahead and help me out. What is episode 34? So uh, yeah, you can definitely help me out with that one. But today, boys, apart from the nice and fresh trim that I got, today it is time to step it up in the Premier League. It is time to take on the top scorer of the Premier League. Harry Kane, 22 goals. Can he take away my clean sheet? Probably yes, but maybe no. We'll see what we can do. It is going to be a big matchup against Spurs today and I will be trying my hardest to not fail against them because Manchester City is not giving up. They are chasing us down and at the same time Spurs is trying to get involved into the Premier League title race. If we lose and City wins, we are on 60, City is on 60 and Spurs is on 56. That, my friends, is not acceptable. And at the same time, United and Chelsea could be getting involved into the title race as well. We don't want any of that. But I'm going to put down my controller for this. If you guys are enjoying these episodes, and also if you're new on the channel, please, first of all, hit that like button. And of course, go ahead and subscribe. That would be very much appreciated. Let's try and get ourselves to 292,000 subs. It's taken too long. Come on, man, sub to the channel. We have an editor. This is the professional content over here. Do it. Yes, I'm screaming at you. Okay, I'm a nice guy normally. To start off the episode, let's get into a roast. Here, obviously, since the last few episodes, we've had a lot of comments that were funny from you guys that I pointed out, and I'm gonna point out a lot of them in today's episode as well. But here's one from Jun Han, and he says, Jenny, let's try to win. To get a clean sheet, guys. Alison says, ah, shh, here we go again. I can't even say that word. YouTube will demonetize me. Um, there's a comment then coming down as a response from Leah Land. And he says, yeah, Alison does probably say that. I bet he would rather be at home playing FIFA 20 and would put Johnny in goal. And then a the guy responds, lol, great joke. Please sub. And then the next one just says, no. <laughs> Dude, that roast got me hard. What? Like, I could imagine Michael Garcia's face just saying no when he was typing it. He was probably like, N O. Enter. Now, in the last episode, there was a comment from Ziad, and a couple of people actually commented about this. He says, Hi, Johnny, get rid of Malasia. He is terrible and buy Hakimi. Now, I'm not going to buy Hakimi because I want to keep Hakimi for one of, one of the future career modes. He is a very talented player that I would like to bring in um, for when we have more time with that specific player. But right now, it is nearly transfer deadline day, and I want to kick off the episode with a nice little transfer. So, this time around, people, we go into it. And we go for cucurella, mozzarella, scotarella, umbrella. If anyone remembers that song, you're a legend, mate. Yes. Uh, we're going to jump into this deal. I want to get him into the team in replacement of Malasia. Malasia will go into this deal. I don't care how much money they want, but he will go. And also, I promise to you, right after this transfer, I'm changing the looks of this manager. It's getting too much. It's hurting in my eyes. So we're going to offer um, a player swap. We're going to give them Malasia and hopefully they'll be happy with that. Here you go. Are you okay with that? But they're looking to bring in someone else. Now, well, that's that's cool. Great. Great. Can't get rid of him. They're looking for center backs. Do I have any center backs to give away? No. Wingers. Any wingers to give away? Uh, I guess we can give away Charles Morgan. He's a youth academy player who probably will never play for us. So Charles Morgan. Will you take that up on yourselves, Barcelona? Uh, they are not interested. Well, psh, mate, I'm just going to offer you a transfer fee then. Uh, we're going to offer them 30 million for Cucurella. Because if Malasia is worth 21, Cucurella is probably higher. 
uh, valued. But we're going to add a sell-on clause of 10% and see what they say. Can we get him into the team? They're asking for 33 million. We are accepting that. And Kukurela will be replacing Malasia in this team. And Malasia will be put onto the transfer list immediately. That is the plan. Right after I'm done with the negotiations for the contract, we're going to take a look into this guy's stats. I really hope he is high rated. 76k is what he's asking for. And with that, Kukurela is joining into the team. You guys wanted a new left back and we now got him for the under 23s because Malasia, let's be honest, he has been quite bad for us down that left hand side, replacing the long term injury of Theo Hernandez, who was supposed to be playing in that position. But Malasia is being replaced with a 78 rated Kukurela, who is just looking better. 22 years old, left footed, left back, um, 86 pace, 74 passing, 78 dribbling, which is very good. The defending isn't that great, but um, I think he's going to be doing just about fine, especially with his 90 stamina. This is a great player to have have in that left back position a little bit more offensive but at the same time I think he can do his job better than Malasia in that left back spot so I'm glad that we have brought in Kukurela to kick off the episode and now I'm actually gonna go and put a lot of the Deadwood players onto the transfer list now and um, yeah just try and get some offers for those as we get into this game right here as we see Stevie G right there screaming and pushing on this Liverpool team against Spurs which is one of the biggest matches of the season looking forward to this one we can go through another comment from Vladio Gamora says did you win Johnny says yes Gamora responds what did it cost Johnny says the clean sheet <laughs> The level of creativity of some of you guys with these jokes is actually sick. I'm loving it. You guys are genuinely the best. There's another comment. This one made me laugh the most, by the way. Arda Akdemir says, Fiverr should make a mod so Johnny gets more clean sheets. Is it really that bad? Am I really that bad with clean sheets? I really wonder. Let me know in the comments down below. Here it goes. It begins and Keita is playing instead of Goretzka in that centre midfield role. Not as good defensively as Goretzka, but moving forward, he might be an even better option. Uh, saying that, I've lost the ball straight away. Cool stuff. Okay, um, why is Spurs playing as if they are Man City? I can't get a touch on the ball. Okay, City, can we calm down? Can we calm down? City, can we calm down? Harry Kane nearly scored already. What the hell is going on? They had the ball for the entire, what is it now? Eight minutes of the game. Hyung Min against Nabi Keita. Nabi does well to push him off there. And Bruno Fernandes finally with a counter attack for our team. I see runs being made. Bruno Fernandes is the best one. Yes! Go on! Oh no, he hits the post! Early on into the game, we get our chance, the biggest chance of the game, despite only maybe having 10% possession. I'm not even kidding, we do get it done. I forgot to change his outfit. Remember, Johnny, remember! Oh, there we go. Serge Nabri, that's the run! Uh, not really the best of runs. Serge, good turn, good finesse! Good finesse! That is what you want to see. Serge Gnabry with an absolute beauty of a strike. Going into the top right corner. Getting past Serge Aurier with the Berba spin. Which is just the skill move that worked since FIFA 16 I believe. It is the one to beat the AI down that position. What a finish by the way. That didn't just go into the bottom right. That went into the top right corner. Serge Gnabry showing once again why he is the great replacement of Sadio Mane. Very happy with this kid down that left-hand side. Unbelievable player. Nabi Keita now running away from Ndombele. Nabi Keita does see Bruno Fernandes down the middle. We see another run being made. Dembele, Nabi Keita once again. He stops, brings it back. Bruno! Oh, Pacheco, good save there. Loris apparently not in goal. By the way, what do you guys think about Arsenal losing? I mean, Arsenal have lost against Sheffield. 
If I'm looking at the squad of Arsenal, I'm thinking to myself, Golasso! That's what I'm thinking to myself. Spurs have conceded once again. Bobby Firmino makes a run. It's actually a goal after a cross. A rare sighting in the career mode or in general on FIFA 20. We score. 2-0 up against Spurs, third place team in the league and the first place team shows why they are up there. Bobby Firmino, class finish once again, does exactly what he's needed to do in that position. We're very happy with that. And let's go back to the topic of Arsenal. Ow, ow, that really hurt. Um, Arsenal, um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh yeah, they lost against Sheffield. What are we thinking of that, man? Arsenal have such incredible players in the likes of Aubameyang, Lacazette. If Ozil is being played in a right formation, he is world class. They have Tierney now as a left back. They don't even play him. They have Hector Bellerin. They have some really good players, but I don't understand how Unai Emery keeps on playing this defensive football with them. They just aren't built for it they aren't made for it arsenal used to be a team that just bombs forward plays really nice passing play and scores goals now they they're they're not even a shadow of themselves they're 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 something else they play like a relegation side and that's not cool to watch i hope that arsenal can turn it around even though i personally don't like arsenal i still don't want big teams to suffer as much because it kind of ruins the entire competition in the league and that's not what you want to see. You don't want to see one or two teams just dominate the seasons over and over and over again. That's not how football should be working. You know, we scored two goals and Spurs have scored none. I just don't want them to score one. Um, I'm not going to say why. I just don't want Spurs to score one. And they start off immediately with Lamela skilling around me fooling around with me that's not what i want to see Divo Origi has come in by the way for Dembele because um Dembele was very tired for playing from the under 23s Eriksen tries to get a cross in early on not really working out Eriksen um could potentially or should i think should leave um uh, Spurs in the January transfer window in real life. What do you guys think about it? I think this whole situation of him and Vertonghen might actually be true. Vertonghen might have had something with his ex-wife or something or his ex-girlfriend. I can't really remember what it was, but apparently there is big issues in the dressing room of Spurs that just won't go away as Navi Keita takes aim and misses. And loses the ball against Eric Dyer, who clearly is stronger. Where should Eriksen go? I'm not even kidding. I wouldn't mind Eriksen at Liverpool. Just saying. Oh, no. Oh, no. There goes the clean sheet. Van Dijk. Yes. Virgil van Dijk. That just felt like a goal. That just felt like a goal. Let's go. Spurs again with like 90% possession. Just can't get it off them. Now we do. Finally, in the 77th minute, Robbo. Plays it through. Bruno Fernandes. Ah, no. Keita, what did you do? Oh, no. Davies. Good cross. Alisson punches it away. It lands right in front of the feet of Harry Kane. Oh, my. <sighs> yeah, go ahead. Make your jokes. Make your jokes. It's it's cool. It's cool. Ugh, a bicycle kick. Interesting. 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 Nothing else to say. Spurs now with the last attack, potentially. Whew, okay. 2-1 victory. I'll take that. I'll take that. It's it's no clean sheet. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, we won't say those words anymore. But Harry Kane right here comes up with his 23rd goal of the season. And it is just a ridiculous goal. I have to admit, it is just such a good finish. I don't know how he did that. I don't know how he realized that the goalkeeper was out of his position to score that one but yeah bit unfortunate for ourselves lads we tried our best to keep it down to nil goals for spurs but at the end he is just unstoppable bobby Firmino with an absolutely brilliant performance in this game very happy with what he has done for us in this one Serge Gnabry as well, played well. Bruno Fernandes was great. Nabi Keita at times was outstanding, at times was absolutely terrible. But yeah, it is a win. Win's a win. That's what we want. Well, transfer deadline day is upon us. Let's see if we do get to sell any of our players. Hey, there's a message. 
And it is a loan offer for Grujic. No, United, you won't be getting Liverpool players. Cancel offer for Charles Morgan. There we go. That's going to be 11 million that we accept people. 19 year old left wing center attacking mate. Sadly, won't get any play time with us. But Parma, he might just be their starting player. Who knows? We're going to go ahead and accept this because we want to let him go and let him enjoy his life. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens because we have way too many talented players taking over those types of positions. We have Barnes, we have Hudson Adoy, we have so many great players playing for our team at the moment that we don't have to rely on someone from the Youth Academy. But I think that might just about be it nothing else might be happening in this transfer window not even the transfer of morgan if we don't have a message now saying that he has been sold and yes that is the message that he has been sold yes he is gone charles morgan at least one deadwood player has left the team on transfer deadline day and liverpool still being chased down by the likes of manchester city chelsea that is a quite interesting league table at the moment. United have dropped down to where they belong, which is top five, top six, basically fifth or sixth. That is where I normally expected them to be. And City definitely won't be given up. I will have to win every single game. And of course, now when the transfer window is over, we get transfer offers. Cool, cool, cool. Origi, blah, 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 blah. And don't care anymore. I don't want those players sold now. We have scout reports, though, which might be interesting, but they are not because I don't know what is happening. I think this might be a thing with Fiverr, his mod, because these Youth Academy players just are absolutely terrible. I might need to get a 5 star 5 star scout because this is not looking like anything that is sustainable. This is not this is not good, especially when we do the road to glory. This is this is way too harsh. There's something with FIFA right now and I know, I need you guys to tell me about this in the comments down below because I need this to be reported to EA. If you guys are playing on console without any mods are you getting training injuries on the first of the month? Let me know in the comments down below, please. Hashtag injury. If your players, and, and be honest, if your players are getting injured on the first of the month every single time with a training injury, please let me know because I want to know if this is connected to the mod or if this is connected to EA and I need to report this because if it is an issue that is an EA issue, that could be a massive problem for career mode. Let me know in the comments down below once again, please. Hashtag injury. Very important. Hey, Bobby Firmino, player of the month. He totally deserves it, people. It's been a long time since we've seen any of our players win this. Um, City is putting on the pressure, guys. They have already won their next game. Chelsea have won won their game as well united as well it seems like everyone is winning apart from spurs who have now lost yet another game dropping out of the top four and in terms of this the top scorers bobby Firmino, is chasing them down at the moment sane and kane way further ahead and kane's team is struggling <coughs> after the loss against us now we are in february guys and we do get an offer for cox right here it is yet another guy that is a youth academy talent so we're going to let him go but we're going to jump right in into this part and we're going to move on into the wolves game we have two wolves games back to back which is odd and i keep getting transfers once the transfer window is done that is just silly that's not how it should be going but hey that's fine we keep accepting we have wolves coming up and then we have Torino. I need to take a look into the league table because for one second I saw two Wolves sim em emblems and I thought that we have to play against them twice. But we have Torino in a Champions League round of 16, which isn't really an opponent that scares me. I'm very happy that we did pick up that, that team as an opponent. Wolves now at home will be simulated and it's going to be simulated with the reserves team. The old goalkeeper has to play six more games full fit from last season. Let's not forget about those types of things because they are important for our career mode. And it is going to be Malasia, actually. No, um, where's Cucurella? There he is. Cucurella is going to be stepping up into that team. We can bring on uh, Marlon and the boys onto the bench of this squad as well, which is going to be quite useful. And hopefully this team will manage to get a good result. That is what we are after, after all. This is um, a 
decent side to be honest with Vinaldum, Keita, Olmo in midfield. Defense obviously with Van Dijk is pretty decent as well. So maybe this team can get a victory against Wolves. It is very important that we get at least a draw in this one. Otherwise, I am going to be quite upset. Here we go. They play in the 5-3-2 formation. It simulates through and Martinez immediately scores. They do equalize though. See Fuentes not doing his job, I'm guessing. Come on, people. We can get this victory. I believe in you guys. I love the fact that simulations like these are back. Fiverr, you have done a great job, man. This was very necessary because I hate the way it is now in FIFA 20. Come on, lads. Van Dijk! Virgil van Dijk! El Capitan jumps up and scores from a header. That's at least what I'm expecting. Otherwise, it must be a goal where he got the ball from his goalkeeper. Decided, you know what? I'm going to go on a skill run. Kazooie is Dutch, isn't he? He probably thought to himself, hey, I'm going to do a Kazooie here. Just run through this team with my skill moves and score top beans. Van Dijk, 2-1, 3 points. Very important. We're going to be jumping into this game against Torino because it is the away game. And that is going to be very important for us. It is obviously Champions League football. We want to win that title. We want to defend it for one more time. Three times back to back is the goal that we're basically going for at this stage. Obviously, in real life, they won it. We won it. And now Liverpool going for it against Torino, which is quite interesting to see that they have made it this far. I am going to be playing with this team right here, but I am going to be playing Sifuentes instead of Alisson in this game. I should maybe change it in this menu right here where you jump into it because that way he's going to be back right after this game. I need to give Sifuentes some more play time that he now has five games played. This will make it six if I can find him. Where is the old man? There he is, 73 rated Sifuentes joining in and I believe that is a very good lineup for a match against Torino. Bruno Fernandes has to get more goals, has to get more assists. We need to make sure that he has an outstanding performance for the fan objectives people. Otherwise, it's not looking good. I don't know if I've shown you the fan objectives yet, but take a look at them right now. Corner taken quickly, still on four. The super subs has moved up to seven because Soboslai and Barnes have scored goals as super subs. So we are improving ever so slightly. Here it begins. Uh, they have Paul Linho in the striking position, Simeone in the team as well, quite interesting players, Zaza as well, quite offensive if you ask me, if that is the Simeone I remember, I think he was a striker, so this is interesting. We are playing against a decent little Torino side right here and it is going to be quite clear to try and get Bruno Fernandes all these goals and assists in this game while also obviously going for the victory in an away game. Winning with a few goals would be massive for ourselves. So let's try and do that. Oh, Bruno. Bruno and Firmino playing together nicely as always. We get it back into Alan. Alan. Bruno. Bruno with the turn. Bruno with the finesse. Okay. <laughs> he does his signature celebration. It's the one-handed push-up. Bruno Fernandes. What a finish, mate. That is what you expect from someone who has such good long shot statistics. I was wondering if I could pull it off. And we did. What a finish that is. Torino already 1-0 down. Liverpool and Bruno Fernandes succeeding. As always, what a goal. I will enjoy that in the replay once again. And the push-ups as well. Very nicely done. Well, good form, man. Really good form. I like it. Here we go again. Oh, this could be it. Bruno. Firmino, you need to get that. You need to get that. Oh, I still haven't changed his outfit. My God, I'm going to forget about it. Am I not? Longley. Ooh, actually, I got onto a header. Surprise, surprise. It's going to be some decent passing play from Torino right here to get in behind with Jahan Baksh, the guy that was supposed to be a massive uh, player for Brighton. Never really turned out to be so. Bruno Fernandes once again. An attacking mood. Bruno, once again with a great ball. Bobby, this has to be yours. Yes, Bobby Firmino. We score once more. Bruno Fernandes is going for two scorer points in this match. Very nice to see. 
He has to have a total of the most scorer points in the Champions League and we're already in the round of 16 and so far he's only had one goal and one assist. So now he has two goals and two assists. Very nice to see. It's going to be tough though to come to the top of this list because there are players that already have like eight goals and maybe one or two assists as well. So Bruno Fernandes has to step it up big time in the Champions League and I need to realize then I need to get more assists with Trent because if I don't, I am not allowed to fly to Liverpool if Liverpool win the Premier League title. I'm not allowed to fly there to enjoy the celebrations. That would be mental. So I need to focus up, boys. Later on in the second half, Dembele is going to come off. Trent is going to move into the right wing position and we're going to try and get some assists with him. Oh, that's a good move. That's a good move, man. Sifuentes gets beaten. Zaza scores 2-1. Torino back into the mix. Ah, not what you want to see, man. That was a really good move. Take a look at this. Simeone gets past Van Dijk way too easily. And Zaza realizes he has to shoot immediately and gets it past Trent and the goalkeeper. Zaza now in the 36th with his second goal in the Champions League. Well done for him. Some well-played football right here from the likes of Zaza again is he gonna go for the second are they gonna they, they actually get the second I was pretty comfortable up until this point <sighs> okay Simone Zaza has taken is it is that even his name I don't even know if that is Simone Zaza but Zaza is getting his team back into it Paulinho scores I believe that is the Paulinho that used to play for Leverkusen uh, if I'm not mistaken and it's 2-2 people that's how fast it can go I mean, we are still on an advantage because we have two away goals, but we need to do better than this. All right, Trent now moves into the right wing position. Dembele moves over to the left. Nabri seems a bit tired and Nabri comes off and we bring on Wijnaldum as a right back because I think he can play there or Martinez, but Martinez is left footed, so that won't work. We're going to go for Wijnaldum. Dembele, well played. Here we go into Nabi. Nabi back into Bruno, left foot. Come on, you can do it with the left as well. Didn't work that time. Trent now running past Zaza, maybe. Yes, he does. Nabi, Trent. He's going to be looking for the pass. He gets the pass. Trent Alexander-Arnold with the assist. And it is Ousmane Dembele. Originally, it was the plan to take him off, but he surprisingly had more stamina. And it did work into our favor. Ousmane Dembele with the finish. I thought he was offside as well. Take a look at this. Great play, by the way, from Trent. I genuinely thought Usman was offside, but hey, we'll take it. It's the fifth assist of Trent in this season. Five more to go. We're basically 60% through the season, so we need to step it up. Oh no, Zaza not again. Zaza not again. Sifuentes, 41 year old, and he still gets it done. My man Sifuentes paying attention. His sixth game of the season. He knows what's up. He has the pressure on him. And Trent is going to get in behind with a beautiful pass of Wijnaldum. Trent has people in the middle. He sees Bruno Fernandes making that run. Bruno won't get it. That would have been a perfect combination. An assist for Trent. A goal for Bruno. Oh no, that's not good enough there. Firmino. Trent. Go on, Trent. Bring it towards Firmino. Firmino. Great turn. Good finish. Good finish. Six assists. Six. Come on. Just like the Champions League titles for Liverpool. Six. That's what we like to see. Bobby Firmino, once again, outstanding performance in that striking position. Gets past the defender and shoots just about before the defender gets in his tackle. 4-2 up against Torino, away from home. That's the type of performance you expect from the European champions. Oh, here we go. Nabi. Nabi got the pass from Bruno. Brings it back to Bruno. Bruno! Bruno! 5-2! This has to be one of the best games that this team has played. Genuinely, I can't remember the last time where we played this well. It is a beautiful match. Yes, we conceded two goals, but the goals and the way that we are scoring them are just so nice to watch. Bruno Fernandes with three scorer points in this game. Trent with two assists in this game. This is the fan objective game, people. This is what we want. Very nicely done. And now I'm going to make some substitutions because if things go right, 
We might even work towards the super sub. So Bobby comes off, Brewster comes in, and then Olmo or Origi. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna give a chance to Almada. Almada comes in. Nah, Olmo. Olmo, yeah, you deserve it, bro. You're gonna come in right there. Bruno moves to center mid. Trent now moving forward with pace. Trent Alexander Arnold will not be stopped. Trent Alexander Arnold. Cut back in. Please it. Bruno. Ah, oh, it could have been the perfect combo. Couldn't pull it off. Sorry. 90 plus 3 is what we will be going after. Dembele brings it to Brewster. We bring it down to Trent. Brewster again. Brewster turns. Ah, it's good defending there from Tomori. And that is the end of the game. The super subs couldn't get it done. But the team has done well enough already. No reason to be upset. It is a 5-2 victory away from home. An unbelievable game. So happy with the way this has come out. Bobby Firmino, outstanding performance. Two goals for himself. Bruno Fernandes, three scorer points. And of course, Trent with the two assists as well. He did really well as a right wing. I liked him a lot. His passing play was great. Oh, now we get a transfer offer for Malasia. Well, I'm accepting it anyways. It's 21 million offer for Malasia right there coming in. Lewis has been sold. And we just keep on selling these young uh, lads that just don't have any play time in our team. Liverpool still in that first position. Still only a three-point gap to Manchester City. And we will have to step up our game right now against the likes of um, Southampton. Southampton currently in which position? In the 12th position, who is going down? Fulham, Norwich, Nottingham Forest. Everton struggling. 20 points out of 26 games. The blue side of Liverpool might be going down, you know. Here it goes against Southampton. I am expecting a really good game here. This should be one. Oh, a red card already. Come on, boys. Dembele with the 1-0 right after the red card. The morale should be down big time for our opponents already. Dembele with the 2-0 as my wife is calling me. I'm going to go onto the phone very soon. Come on, we just need to get this to the 90th minute. We we're going to skip it. 3-0. Clean sheet, Alisson. Let's go. I'm here, wifey. Hello? Dude, City is just not letting go. They are just winning game after game after game after game. It's just not working out. They just won't leave us go or let us go. It's unbelievable. West Ham coming up in the last game of the month right here, people. As you know, we have a rule of simming two games a month. And uh, we have played against Wolves. We have played against uh, South uh, against Torino, simulated against Southampton. One more now against West Ham, and that way we will hopefully get a good enough result to end. Why is Why is Fernandez upset? I need to check out why Fernandez is upset. I don't like the fact that some of my best players are upset. Brewster is upset because of his contract. That is easily fixable. Same goes for Fernandez. All right, I'm going to give these two new contracts. Here it goes then against West Ham, people. This is going to be the game that could maybe finally see us go top with a little bit more of a gap than just three points. So I would really appreciate it. A victory against Southampton was quite important to see from our team. Now a victory against West Ham would just be just as nice. The main team is just really strong and normally you you do expect this team to beat West Ham and hopefully it's going to go exactly that way. Already a yellow card for Yarmolenko in the 10th minute. Liverpool now still searching for that one moment to score a goal. We haven't found it yet. Hala scores. What? No way I'm losing against West Ham. Roberto Firmino. Oh boy. Bobby Firmino in the 89th minute. That was incredibly important. No clean sheet, no victory. That might have just been terrible for us. We're going to take a look at the league table immediately and see if City have caught up. City haven't played yet. Who are they going to be playing against? City will be playing against, I don't know who, but don't see it. Hello? Are you guys going to be playing against anyone at the end of this month or not? Nah? Uh, well, nope. Apparently not. Apparently their first game of the month is going to be against us, which puts even more pressure on me. And another training injury at the beginning of the month, and it's Van Dijk again. Let me know. Hashtag injury. Is this happening to you as well? Yes or no? Because it keeps on happening to me. Scout updates have been awful lately, so no reason to really give a flying beep. And um, yeah. 
that is just once again really really bad scout reporting even though they are four star four star scouts they're just bringing me terrible terrible youth academy players but i think that has something to do with the mod um because ever since we have gotten the mod that's the one thing that has stood out to me which hasn't been as good as you think it would be but uh, van dyke again injured sheffield united in the fa cup round five we don't have manchester united or cities to worry about the under 23s will be stepping up in the next episode to get the job done in the fa cup we don't have the Carabao cup to go after anymore so we will have to do our best in that one in terms of objectives we have done a really good job today in today's episode bruno fernandez has gotten himself score a point trent got got two assists which is really really important and um sadly super subs haven't really done anything in today's episode but we have done well enough um to make ourselves proud next episode we are going to be running after those objectives because we are already in march people yes march is the time that we are in already and yeah we need to be doing a little bit better in the upcoming games hopefully we will be getting those objectives done thank you guys so much for watching this episode i love you for being here i love you for watching the video until now if you watched it until now you're a legend leave a comment down below saying <sighs> lampard manager of the month lampard if you say lampard in the comments down below i know you watched until the end and you are the real one take care peace player of the episode is bruno Fernandes.